Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. So yes, I know it's been a while, but NicheLTube is finally back with more amazing educational tutorials. So in this video, we'll be trying to understand and learn all about cells, which are also known as the building blocks of life. So this is just a beginner lesson on what a cell is. We'll be trying to understand who discovered the cell and the main goal of this video is to try to differentiate between the various different types of cells. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on so you can get notified every time I upload an amazing new educational video. So, what is a cell? A cell is the basic unit of life, the fundamental unit of life which all of us are made of. Every living organism is comprised of either a single cell or multiple cells working together. So they are first discovered by Robert Hooke in the year 1665. He was observing a dead slice of cork through a self-made primitive microscope and he noticed some rectangular shapes. They look like little rooms or compartments and they were aligned in rows and columns and he decided to call these cells because the word cell means a small room or a compartment. And when he was observing these this dead slice of cork through his microscope, he noticed these rectangular shapes that were lining the entire cell or the cork. And these were cells. So the function of cells. Cells are often called the structural and functional units of life. So one, they're called the structural units because as I mentioned earlier, they compose who we are and they make up the structure of the human body. And two, they're called functional units of life because each cell carries out several important functions that are needed for the organism to thrive and live. So yes, cells are called structural and functional units of life and their function is to carry out important functions which help the human body or any living organism to live and they also compose the structure of the any organism so before we d dive in too deep we need to understand at least on a high level the hierarchy of a human body so this is very important and i suggest that you all get very familiar with this because i really think that this will help you in your future if you're trying to pursue a career in biology or medicine or something like that because really this is what you, this is the basis this is the basics of what you need to understand and Really, we need to understand what makes up our human body. Step one is the cell. It's the first level. Really, a cell makes up who we are, and it's the fundamental unit. It's the basic unit. Several cells working together form a tissue. And a tissue is just a group of cells who have similar functions. And then several tissues form an organ. So our body is full of organs. We have a brain, a heart, lungs, kidneys. These are all organs and they provide important functions for us to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And then we have an organ system. So several organs working together create a properly functioning organ system. So I provided a diagram of the respiratory system and in this diagram we can see that the organ organs that we need in the respiratory system include the lungs, the, thor the windpipe, the trachea, these are all organelles that are needed. We breathe in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Those are organelles. Those are organs too. So then, several organ systems. Our body is comprised of many, many organ systems. So if I just, if I were to name a few, it'd be the circulatory system, the nervous system, the respiratory system, the excretory system. All of these are important systems that work together. And then we finally have, if we combine all of these systems to perform all the functions, we have an organism, which is us. So, now let's look at the two main types of cells, which are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So, as soon as we look at these cells, we know there's a major difference on how they look and their appearance. The prokaryotic cell looks almost like a capsule or a pill, whereas the eukaryotic cell looks like it's well-defined as like a circular, a standard, a defined shape. So now let's look at some differences. A prokaryotic cell, if you break down the word, we get pro, which means primitive, and then karyon, which means nucleus. So in a prokaryotic cell, there's actually no true nucleus. It's just a vast area called the nucleoid, 
we'll see that in the eukaryotic cell, this is very, very, very different. So there's no true nucleus in the prokaryotic cell, and it, there's no membrane-bounded organelle. So an organelle is basically a subunit within a cell which carries out important functions for the cell to stay healthy. And so some examples of some organelles, we have the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, the mitochondria. So all of these organelles, they're like organs of a human body. So in our human body, the organs, they do a lot of important jobs for us to stay healthy. So similarly, in a cell, all these organelles do important functions for the cell to stay healthy. So there's also a circular DNA formation, which you'll see it's different in a eukaryotic cell. And so some examples of how prokaryotic cells are, they, they can be found in blue-green algae, bacteria, paramecium, chlamydomonas, and really any type of bacteria. And yes, these are all unicellular organisms, meaning that they have only one cell. So now let's look at the eukaryotic cell. So in the eukaryotic cell, if we break down the word, we know it says U, which means well, and carrion, which means nucleus. So we know that it has a well-defined nucleus area. Just looking at the diagram, we see that the whole nucleus is surrounded by several organelles. It's surrounded by a nuclear membrane and a nuclear pore. And it's really a well-defined area and a well-defined organelle. It's the heart of the cell. It's the brain of the cell. And really, the nucleus is what controls the entire cell. It directs all the activities. So... In a eukaryotic cell, it's well-defined. You can obviously see a, ma a really major difference in how the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell looks and how the nucleus of a prokaryotic cell looks. So it's a major difference. In a prokaryotic cell, there's actually no true nucleus. It's just an area called the nucleoid. So there's strong support, with, which is provided by the cell membrane, which is the organelle that it's the outermost covering of the cell, and it... It only allows certain substances in and out, which is why it's called a semi-permeable membrane. So it also has membrane-bounded organelles. So as I mentioned earlier, some organelles, the mitochondria, cytoplasm, and Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum, cytoplasmic membrane, ribosomes, these are all organelles. And these are eukaryotic cells are only found in multicellular organisms. And, of course, according to the cell theory, every cell or every multicellular organism comes from existing, pre-existing cells. So in a eukaryotic cell, the cell division occurs through a process known as mitosis or meiosis. We'll be getting into cell division and the organelles very soon in our upcoming video. So some examples of eukaryotic cells are plants, animals, and fungi. So within eukaryotic cells, we have plant cells and animal cells. These are the two main types of eukaryotic cells that you'll need to know for your science class or your biology class. These are the main two different types of cells. So now let's look at plant cells versus animal cells. So in this corner, we have plant cells, and in the other corner, we have animal cells. Let's look at the differences. So before we need to look at the differences, you need to understand that many of the differences of plant cells and animal cells exist by the organelles. So plant cells and animal cells have different organelles. Most of them are very similar, but some of them, the plant cells have like different organelles and the animal cells have different organelles, just a few of them. So the proper definition of an organelle is the subunit within a cell which carries out several important functions. So some examples are the plasma membrane or the cell membrane, the nucleus, the mitochondria, or the chloroplasts. So we'll be looking into those very soon. So plant cells have a cell wall, and animal cells do not have this. So they have a cell wall because they need to maintain their strong, straight shape. And it's a rectangular shape, whereas an animal cell, it's an irregular shape. One of the main organelles that differs between plant cells and animal cells is that plant cells actually have plastids, which are like, basically there's two types. There's a chromoplast and a leucoplast. Leucoplasts are organelles that act as storage units for starch and protein. And chromoplasts, they are organelles which they can be divided into chloroplasts. And these chloroplasts are what allow the cell to go through photosynthesis. 
which is the process by which plant cells gain their nutrients or their glucose or their energy. In a plant cell, they ev- both plant and animal cells have a vacuole, and a vacuole is basically a large, it could be large in plant cells, but smaller in animal cells. But the function of pl- the vacuole is to, it's a storage unit, but it's also almost like a waste area where all the foreign material can go from the cell. And the, in a plant cell, the it has a large central vacuole, which comprises nearly 50 to 90 percent of the total area of the cell. And this just means it's really big. And then the nucleus, the, since the vacuole is so large, the nucleus just pushes all the other organelles out of the way. And which is why the nucleus, or the heart of the cell, the, it's towards the periphery or the edge of the cell. So, in an animal cell, these are the key organelles that uh, plant cells don't have. They have lysosomes, which are like, dig- they contain hydrolytic digestive enzymes, which, which can break down any foreign materials that enter the cell or any worn out organelles. They have centrosomes and centrioles which are basically organelles that assist the cell and initiate cell division. And typically, the animal cells have irregular shapes, unlike the plant cell, which is just a box shape. It's a standard box. So, yes, that will do it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. So, as of now, we just covered the basics of a cell, but in part two, we'll really be covering the different organelles of a cell and the functions of these and cell division so stay tuned for that subscribe like and share and remember through these difficult times i understand it may be hard but remember we don't stop learning regardless of what situation we're going through the most important thing is to stay healthy and keep learning so now before i end the video i just want to say thank you to all the support and response that i've been receiving lately uh, I've received nearly 65 subscribers and 100 likes in one of my videos, 18k views for the 5 Living Kingdom videos, and I'm really surprised. Four years ago, I didn't expect that it would go down like this. Uh, I, didn't, I, really didn't, I really didn't expect this, and I just want to thank all of my supporters. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to subscribe for more notifications and amazing content. And yeah, that will do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoy it, and stay tuned for Cell Lesson Part 2.